Okay. Welcome to the stream, ladies and gentlemen. What's this doing up here? We're not doing Chaos 6010 tonight. We'll do that another night. Guys, I am Mashiaxaurus, of course, uh, and I'm still sick, but I'm getting better. Um, we're doing another uh, KOTOR stream. Um, but before we get into it, uh, I, I, I'm going to cheat. Um, and uh, there's a couple of reasons that I've decided to do this. Uh, one is that I'm more interested in showing off the uh, uh, the storyline, and uh, that will be better served if we aren't constantly failing checks and stuff. The game is balanced around the idea that like the character cannot do everything, so you have to make choices. And, like, I mean, that's great for multiple playthroughs, but I'm not planning to play through this game for you guys multiple times because it's a very long game. Uh, and also, um, just because uh, I think it's more entertaining if we move through battles fairly quickly and get to the actual plot stuff, because let's face it, the combat in KOTOR is not uh, thrilling. So what I've got here is the KOTOR save game editor. So, uh, okay, yeah, that's fine. Oh, okay, apparently the, uh, that needs to be open. So, um, this works for both the first and second game. And, uh, you see right here, we've got save files for KOTOR 1. We do not have save files for the Sith Lords because I haven't, uh, done any games on that one yet. Uh, and as you can see, it does not tell you what the title of the save is. Um, you got to kind of guess. Um, and when you expand it, that'll tell you what the name was. And this is Busty, so this is the correct save file. So, first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to give us a quick attribute bump. We're just going to go up to having 20 in every attribute. Now you notice I'm doing this, and then I'm hitting apply. And there's another button there that says commit changes. That's the last step. So there. What this will do is give us a plus five in all of our attributes, which is plenty to be able to do whatever we need to do, and uh, you know, not feel like we are horribly underpowered. I also want to bump up our skills a bit, and I'm just gonna every every skill that's below a five, I'm just gonna bump up to a five. This isn't super game breaking, but it does give us a noticeable advantage over playing fairly. And, and especially if you just want the story without a lot of yeah complications, it's like running into an enemy you can't defeat or you struggle with, and you have to like toy with your party and be like, "Who do I bring this time?" Yeah, this just alleviates that mess. Now, um, there is a section here for classes. Like, we can change our class. And we're actually going to meddle with our classes later on uh, for reasons that I will explain. But for right now, um, I'm just going to bump us up to 10,000 credits, which sounds like a lot. Uh, trust me, it's not. Um, it's a lot for this part of the game, but that's it. So we've done all these changes. We hit apply, now we commit changes. That'll actually write the uh, change to the game save file. Oh, can All right. I my nail pen? Save successfully. And then, uh, once you've done that, you can just go ahead and close out. You can make changes to... Uh, you are so cute when you do that. Uh, to other things as well. Um, 
uh, you can change other characters and stuff. We're not going to bother doing that. We don't. We don't necessarily need to have a party of gods. We just want to have a a main character who can breeze through the game as much as possible. So. Because you want to showcase the game. Yeah, I, I, failures, I, I, after failures. Yeah, and I mean, like I said, the combat in this game is not super interesting, especially early on when you've got no powers. Later on, we'll have abilities that we can actually use with some characters. So we're going to load the game, and we're going to load Busty. Okay, and now, if we look at our stats, now we have the higher stats, and uh, the chore credits, are, we have the, the higher amounts of credits, and we have the skills. Now, it was important that we put skills in uh, Demolition's Stealth, uh, Persuade, and Security in particular, because those are skills that like you can only use if you have points in them. Okay. Every time you leave your home base, you have to choose who you want with you. You can choose to not have anyone with you. There's no advantage to that. We're going to add Karth. Yes, this is the party configuration we want. You can have up to two people with you, but right now we've only got one person. Now, let's see if this guy's actually got anything that's worth buying now that we can actually afford stuff. The light battle armor might not be terrible. You see here, you've got a defense bonus and then a max dexterity bonus. This means that if your dexterity bonus is higher than this plus two, it will get cut down to a plus two. So like, for instance, with us, if we were to put this on, we would have a defense bonus of seven, and even though our dexterity bonus is a plus five, we would only get a plus two out of that, which would bring us up to... Uh, plus 9 over our base of 10, which would be an armor class of, it, of uh, 19. A um, lot of stuff that's complete crap. Um, sonic weapons on hit, they do attribute damage, to dexterity, like, I mean, this is stuff that, like, you know, maybe you might use it at some point, but really you're probably not going to. Light Repeating Blaster, this is the only heavy blaster that I think you can get at this point in the game, and it does 1 to 8 damage, which is basically less than our sword. Uh, so heavy blasters are garbage. Do not invest any points into them. Uh, the only character that's an exception to that is Candorous, uh, because when you get him, he comes hyper-specialized in heavy blasters. Which, which is, is awesome. It, well, it's unfortunate, because uh, he's very... Like, heavy blasters, there are some good ones later on, but they're very bad at this point in the game. They are, but he's like one of my favorite characters. It looks like overall he does not have much that uh, we're interested in. I'm really looking for, like unique items. Stuff that we can't get elsewhere. And, uh, by the way, Mephoris, I didn't say hi to you, so, uh, hi. Um, and... Hi, Mephoris! Let's see now. Oh, something's bothering you, Karth? Yes, what's on your mind? Uh, you do. Fair enough, what do you want to discuss? Uh, yeah. I don't even really understand where I was coming from. Let me try to explain. You're probably one of the most skilled women I've ever met. You've saved my butt more than once, and I'm lucky to have you here to help me. No question. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to stop watching you being wary. I'm just not built that way. Period. You, uh, 
You haven't done anything yet, but there's no guarantee that you won't do anything in the future. I've been betrayed before by people, and I've you know, it won't happen again. Oh. I don't know that you'll betray me, but there are no guarantees. Not for you, not for me. You don't have to take it personally. I mean... Yeah, I do. Me? You shouldn't. If you're smart, you won't trust anyone. Not me, not Bastila, and especially not yourself. I don't need to be analyzed, thanks. Can we just get back to business? And I don't need all these questions. What I do need is to try and save the galaxy. That's impossible. Why is whether or not I trust you or anyone so damned important to you? Why, why do you even care? No, we don't have time for this. I so don't. You please just drop it for now. Can we pick it up later if you really must? I, I want to get underway. Yay. He does that a lot. Being a whiny bitch? Yeah. Yep. Welcome. Yes. Let me see what you got for sale. Because um, I might want to pick up one of these, uh, heavy alloy suit. Let's go ahead and buy one of those. The Ichani Ritual brand is uh, a semi-unique weapon. Like, you can find other copies of it, but, like, it's very rare. It's also useless. Um, it counts as having two weapons equipped when you equip it. Um, because 3rd uh, Edition D&D had this thing where it decided that weapons with a pointy end at... Or a pointy thing on both ends was cool. And uh, they just kind of ran with it to the hills, and it carried over into their Star Wars. Um, it's not very good. Uh, the The damage is not super great. It's just got a plus one to attack, and uh, anybody who we want in melee is going to be better off using some form of uh, uh, some form of either upgradable weapon. Or lightsaber. Uh, the Sith sniper rifle. I mean, it's it's just a blaster rifle with a plus one modifier and a slightly better critical threat range. What this means is that, like, if you were rolling this on a table and you roll a d20, and if you roll is a 19 or a 20, then potentially that can be a critical hit or or something, because like. Third edition had something about confirming criticals. It's, uh, it's not worth getting into. Um, short version is. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, <coughs> I swear I'm not dying. Are you? you but I've swear? been. I I have been doing that all day. So don't don't worry about it. Uh, it's just the end of this sickness. But um. But yeah. Uh, while I'm uh, picking around here, I don't know. Yeah, the Bondi and Alloy heavy suit is actually slightly better than the mod armor, and the mod armor doesn't have any mods installed in it. So, and to get back down, we're gonna need the Sith armor. Uh, I think we need to go to Upper City North, and then... I think it's not directly across the solar ships. That guy continues to preach. There's not much to do about him. Don't worry. He'll, he'll get his. Trust me. Okay.
So we could, if we wanted to, just bust our way into the uh, base of the. Uh... Oh, we got that Perma Creek detonator now, don't we? I should go give that guy that thing the fake zone to have. And then we can collect on his bounty because we're pretending that we killed him. I just don't remember where he was, so we gotta find him. Out of curiosity here. Okay, eight, eight is the max we could have. Anything. And feet. Uh, we're gonna want the improved two weapon fighting, and then we'll want to go. We're gonna want to uh, do improved. Fighting. For right now, improved two weapon. Except, which means that at this point, no, no, not with the belt. At this point. We can actually put a weapon in our offhand. Right now, it's just a regular vibro blade. But this will uh, greatly increase our damage output in combat. But you really need at least two feet into that feet tree. Uh, yeah, well. Um. You need you basically need two feet deep into that feet tree to make two weapons worth having. Okay. I mean. Why did you have it on a timer? Why didn't you have it on like a boat? Man, truly epic explosion. Okay, so yeah. now he says, "Don't go back in there." You actually are not capable of going back in there. Oh my god, Carve. Yes, what's on your mind? Oh, you want to argue some more, is that it? Not really, but you what won't does it matter shut up. Why can't you just leave it be? I just don't trust easily. And for good reasons, which are my own. Oh, damn it. I suppose I won't get any rest until I talk, will I? You want to know why I don't trust anyone? Fine. Here it goes. Five years ago, the Jedi had just finished the war with the Mandalorians. Revan and Malak were heroes. I was damn proud to have served in their fleet. It was completely so correct me if I'm wrong. When they Is the Mandalorian the, the uh, like guitar weak. thing that they played <laughs> in the Middle Ages? Our or is it the, like, uh, brutal, machines that you use in the kitchen now to, like, all slice tomatoes? I mean, think about it. If you can't even trust the best of the Jedi, who can you trust? Uh, yeah. It's not that. It's... That's not what I mean. That there were there were others, good, solid, trusted men who joined them. Malak and Revan and the Sith deserve to die for what they've done. But the ones who fled the Republic and joined them are even worse. The dark side has nothing to do with why they joined with the Sith. They deserve no mercy. I know. I'm and I should apologize to you. I've, I've become so accustomed to expecting the worst in others, and you've done nothing to deserve that. It's just no, never mind. Let's just continue with what we were doing. I'd rather not talk about it. I would rather not talk about you. So, that's fair. 
Yes, lower city. Sheesh. Okay. So now we can go turn in that bounty. We'll get credit for it. The You can talk to that bouncer outside, but he doesn't say anything useful at all. And of course he's an alien, so he speaks weird alien language that takes forever to get to his dialogue. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. We'll try to persuade him. Oh, okay. Okay. There we go. Now we need to go to the hidden back base, which is right here. Hey, you can't just walk in here. This is the hidden back base. How do I know you're not a Vulcan spy sent to kill Gadon Thack? You don't. You're, you're awful, awfully cocky. A lot of people want to go inside and speak to Gadon. He's a hero of the common folk. But the days of the Hidden Beck's open-door policy are gone. Between the Sith Conquest and the Hawker Gang War, Gadon has more enemies than he used to. We're being careful about who we let in now. Are you, Governor? Uh... Well, we do need all the help we can get. And you don't look like you're with the Vulcans or the Sith. Besides, it's not like you can do anything to harm Gadon in the heart of his own base. Not with Zedra watching his back. Go in and speak to Gadon if you want. Just remember to be on your best behavior. The hidden backs are watching you. Great. That was a useful conversation. Okay, so this is the hidden back base. It is stupid and it is dumb. Does it have two, two, two turntables and a microphone? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm showing off all of the empty corridors and stuff. Uh, Damn. Oh. I didn't actually mean to security that in the first place. I think this one is also locked. Yep. And it's also going to be impossible. Hold it right there. Who are you? And what is your business with Gat? Calm down, Zerdra. Nobody's going to try anything here in the middle of our own base. It would be a suicide mission. You're too trusting, Gadden. Freshek and his Valkyrs want you dead. Anyone we don't know is a potential threat, and it's my job to make sure you're safe. Do you want us to start attacking strangers on site, Zerdra? Like the Valkyrs do? I will never let it come to that. Now step aside and let them pass. As you wish. You can speak to Gadden if you want, but I've got my eye on you. You try anything and you'll be vaporized before you can say Valkyr spy. Great. I'll talk to you in a minute. No, the control room is locked. Yes, I will take that stuff. It's with the techno thump thump music. <coughs> Fire! <coughs> Excuse me. Why are all your damn doors locked? To keep you out. Mm. You'll have to forgive Zerdra. Ever since Brezhik and the Vulcans began this war against us, she's been a little overzealous in her security duties. The problems with the Sith haven't helped things. Zerdra seems to forget that I know how to look after myself. Now, how can I help you? I like how the game is 
telling us, I guess, that this, like, effective, effectively biker gang is a bunch of good sorts who only want to help the community and never, like, you know, trash things or steal or do anything violent at all. Eh, let's talk about Escape pods? You know, I heard the Sith have been asking around the upper city about them as well. But you don't look like you're with the Sith. They might be spies, Gadden. They might be working for the Sith. Calm down, Zerdra. If the Sith thought we knew anything useful, they'd have a battalion of troops kicking down our door. No, I think this offworlder has her own agenda. I suppose I could tell you what I know. It's not like it could do any harm to me or my gang. But it might cause problems for the Vulcas, and that's okay in my book. The Vulcas stripped those pots clean within hours after they landed. It's too bad we didn't get there first, considering what my spies reported the Vulcas found. A female Republic officer named Bastila survived the crash. We Bex don't believe in intergalactic slavery, but the Vulcas aren't so picky. They took a prisoner. Normally, the Vulcas would take a captured slave and sell them for a nice profit to Davik, or an off-world slaver. But a Republic officer is no ordinary catch. I still think Bastila is just a Republic officer. That could work to our advantage. Maybe she'll even figure out a way to escape from the Vulcan base on her own. Say that louder, Karth. I don't think Gadden heard you. Regix probably got your Republic friend hidden away somewhere safe until the big swoop race. You'll never find her. I'm afraid your friend has become a pawn in Brezhik's game to take over the lower city. He's offered her up as the Vulcan's share of the prize in the annual Swoop Gang race. By putting up such a valuable prize, Brezhik hopes to win the loyalty of some of the smaller gangs. Their numbers will allow him to finally destroy me and my followers. So how do you propose we go about rescuing Bastila then? Well, we can't fight all the gangs. See, the only self you have of rescuing Bastila is to somehow win the big season opener of the Swoop race. Are you fucking kidding? The I have to win the big season opener of the swoop race. <sighs> I might be able to help you with this. If you'd be willing to help us. We both have something to gain here. And much to lose. Alright. The swoop race is for the lower city gangs only. I could sponsor you as a rider for the Hidden Bex this year. If you win the race, you'll win your friend's freedom. But first, you have to do something for me. My mechanics have developed an accelerator for a swoop engine. A bike with the accelerator installed can beat any other swoop out there. But the Vulcans stole the prototype from us. They plan to use it to guarantee a victory in this year's swoop race. I need you to break into their base and steal it back. Getting into the Vulcan base won't be easy. The front doors are locked tight. But I know someone who might be able to get you in the back way. Mission Vale. Mission? Oh my Gadden, god. you can't be serious. She's just a kid. How is she supposed to help them with this? Mission's explored every step of every back alley in the lower city. Plus, she knows the undercity sewers better than anyone. If anyone can get inside the Vulcan base, it's her. No, 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 no. <sighs> Don't underestimate Mission or her Wookiee friend, Zalba. They're a formidable pair. Tough enough to go exploring the undercity by themselves. Your best bet is to look for her in the undercity. But you'll need some way past the Sith guard post at the elevator. A simple disguise might have worked on the upper city card, but the security down here is much tougher. You'll need the proper papers to get past it. Luckily, my gang ambushed one of the Sith patrols headed down to the undercity. They never made it, and their security papers fell into my hands. Since we're working together now, I suppose I could give them to you in exchange for your uniforms. With the security papers, you won't need a disguise anyway. So, like, when we got these uniforms, or, or talked to, we, we were talking to somebody up uh, up on the top side, they said nobody would be crazy enough to ambush a Sith patrol, but these guys did, and it was no problem? Like, ah, uh, whatever. Good choice. Thanks for the uniforms. You won't need them with these security papers anyway. Now, is there anything else I can do for you? I suggest you hurry. The swoop race is coming up, and we want you to have time to practice before the race. Okay. But this is an RPG. Take all the time you need. Seriously. Yeah, basically. like It doesn't actually matter how long it takes you. 
So we're gonna have to go into the lower, lower city. But now we've got papers, so we don't need to change our armor every time we come down here. I think we do have to talk to the guard, though, the first time. We definitely have to talk to this guard before going into the lower doors. You can attack him, but if you do, these turrets will just gun you down. They are invincible and do crazy amounts of damage, so it's... Mission Veo? Alright! I would really like to. Mission Veo is really useless. And very annoying. And her personal quest line is stupid. You there! Upworlder! Anyone using this elevator has to pay the toll! Yeah, this is our elevator. If you use it, you gotta give us something. I don't believe this planet. Even the beggars are trying to shake us down. Five credits! That's what it costs to use our elevator. Five credits. Uh. Okay. <laughs> credits, my brother. We have credits. Now we can buy food and medicine. Hush, or the others will hear us. They'll want our credits. But we have to hide them. Go on, you two. Get out of here. I'm sorry about that. Those two beggars give everyone in the village a bad name. We aren't all like that, you know. Most of us are good people. I'm sure you are, miss. It's just too bad your little welcoming committee is here to give people a bad first impression. Uh. Shut up, Kurt. My name is Shalina. You're from the Upworld, aren't you? I've, I've never seen it. I was born here in the Undercity. Is it as nice as they say up there? Not to you, I suppose, but you're probably used to its beauty by now. I've never been to the surface, but sometimes I think I can see it in my dreams. The sun, the sky, the stars. It all sounds so, so, so wonderful. Again, Why does it look like you threw village, up all tells over me I should yourself. spend more time trying to improve things down here and less time dreaming about something I can never have. Maybe he's right. You probably think I'm a fool, having dreams of a place I've never even seen. Yes. But when I was little, Rukil used to tell me stories of what it was like up there. Rukil is the oldest man in the village. The kids call him Rukil Wrinkleskin, but he's a kind man. He used to tell me the greatest stories when I was a little girl. I still like to listen to his tales about the promised land. No, Meth, these, these people the have never place. even glimpsed the, the sky the because place. they're not allowed. It's, it's a story to make little children smile. Rukil believes in it, though. Sometimes I can almost believe it myself, but then I look around and see the ugly truth. I guess we have to make the best of what we have, though. If you really want to learn more about the Promised Land, you should speak to Rukil. He's wandering around somewhere on the south side of the village. He doesn't move too far. He's hard on his bones. He's over 100 years old. The children laugh at him, and people think he's crazy because of his stories about the Promised Land, but he's really just a kind old man. Okay. Uh, who's Gendar? Oh, okay. He'll be somewhere in the village. I couldn't say where for sure. He's always busy doing whatever he can to make the lives of the other villagers easier. I don't know anything about that, but maybe Gendar could help you. Sorry. Is there anything else you need? Uh, you know what? Oh, okay. Well, if you ever need anything, or if you just feel like talking, come back and see me. I hardly ever get a chance to speak to someone from the upworld. Oh, my oh God. so this is more for her benefit than for yours. Like, that's what I'm. I'm. <laughs> I'm glad that uh, we have an entire village of pathetic waves, like straight out of a friggin' Dickens, Dickens novel. novel, like. 
think what? Zedman has some more? What the hell, Bioware? Well, that you just answered your own question. What the hell, Bioware? You ain't from the village. You're from the upworld, ain't you? Yes, you've got credits, I bet. Watch yourself. There's something slimy about this guy. I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. My name's Saigir. I run a little salvage shop here. You want to buy something from my store? I got some good deals. If a villager comes across any useful salvage in the Undercity, they bring it to me. Every so often, members from the Lower City gangs come down to trade for the salvage. They'll exchange food and medicine for engine parts, old blasters and the like. Sometimes they even give me credits if I have some really good stuff. He's like, his accent is somewhere between Igor and freaking Irish. So what is Irish Igor? Mostly salvage and such, but the price is right. <coughs> it's shiny battle armor. Uh, it's medium armor. Um, it's actually a pretty solid suit for... Like, uh, what's his face there? Cursed Thinogen. Um... Uh, Heavy pistol. That's not too bad. That's better than what we've got. Pazak cards. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna worry about Pazak unless people really want me to get good at that game because I'm not good at that game. I am gonna buy up all of the all of those things. I'll buy that. That and that. See, I told you 10,000 is not going to take us very far. Okay. So, Constitution plus one isn't doing us anything. This one makes us immune to critical hits and gives us an awareness plus one, which is not fantastic, but better than you know, before. Uh, and you don't have anything else. Now, for you, I think, yeah, this actually uh, bumps you up one. And, rather than the heavy blaster, we can give you the Arcanian heavy blaster. And that's slightly better damage. And your own blaster we can kit out. You'll notice that he can't use the implants because he doesn't have the feats for it. And I could give him the sound dampening stealth unit, but I'm not going to because, you know, well, partly because I hate him. I'm here. Partly because uh, it won't actually do him any good. Uh, I don't no, know. I like the concept. I hate him. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do hate him. I, uh, it's, I'm, I'm not sure what you mean there, uh, Beth. Hold on, I'm just making sure that this is mapped out on my mini map. Okay. Oh, Wait, oh, Worlder, ooh, you can't go through this gate. There is too you. much danger and suffering beyond. For your own sake, turn back. Uh, the villagers infected with the rug gore disease are quarantined beyond this gate. It's only a matter of time until they transform into horrible creatures that would destroy us all. So you just lock them away in a cage? For the sake of the village, we have to keep the infected ones locked away. And when they finally do transform into rock ghouls, we'll let them destroy each other. Nothing can be done for the infected villagers. Even the serum to counteract the rock ghoul disease wouldn't be any use now. Nobody would be foolish enough to risk going into the pens to give them the cure. The infected ones could transform into rock ghouls and attack them at any moment. Okay. Farewell. 
Uh, once we have the serum, uh, we'll go in there and try to help them. Right now we don't have a cure, so like, we can't actually do anything at all to help. Alright, so here, here's... You, you come from the world Rickle. above. Is this the time of destiny then? Is this a portent of the salvation of my people? Or merely another false sign to mislead us from the path? Are you the herald of prophecy? The beacon to guide us through the darkness? Or are you merely another harbinger of shattered dreams and unfulfilled promises? Be careful. No, be I'm uh, Busty Gazangas. Speak to me, Upworlder. Tell me what fate you unleash upon us. Salvation or damnation? Speak, Upworlder, I beg you. Uh, okay. A question. You are uncertain, bewildered, perplexed. Understandable, I suppose. Even after a hundred years of life, I myself still become confused at times. Perhaps I can make things more clear. Some things, at least. My name is Rukil, the oldest outcast here in the village. You're like Rukil, if Patrick Stewart and E.T. had a baby. Once, I was honored for my wisdom. But over time, the villagers fell away from the true path. Yep. Eventually, there was only a single apprentice who followed me. And now she is gone, too. Okay. What happened to your apprentice? My apprentice is lost. I sent her out into the Undercity to find... Well, I cannot tell you. Not yet. Sadly, my apprentice has not returned. Please, Upworlder, will you help an old man? Will you seek out my apprentice in the Undercity? Her name is Malia. I must know of her fate, whatever it may be. I must know what she found. Sure. Finding her may be difficult. Malia could be anywhere in the Undercity. But if you will find her, I will know you to be our true savior. Only then can I reveal my secret knowledge to you. Uh, sure. I wish you luck, Upworlder. Come speak to me again once you have discovered the fate of my apprentice. Okay. Never talking to you again. Greetings, Upworlder. We rarely see your kind here in the Undercity. I find it strange that so many of you have come down from the surface recently. No offense, but <coughs> I don't see why people normally avoid this place. Why have you come into this dark and sunless place? Uh, Karth, you just literally you walked into a hobo village. encampment and then shit the all camp. over the like their lifestyle like what the fuck check your privilege man we are the outcasts shunned from the surface for our crimes and banished here to the undercity we banded together to form this village that we might survive in this hostile environment i am gendar leader of this village as my father was and as was his father before him many of us have been here for generations our ancestors cast down long ago there is no return to the surface for us or our descendants but somehow we managed to survive amidst the filth and roaming bands of deadly rat ghouls. Uh, okay. Ask your questions, Upworlder. I will answer to the best <coughs> of my knowledge, though I know little beyond the borders of the Undercity. Yes, I have seen this Twi'lek many times, though I've never spoken to her. She and her Wookiee companion often pass through our village on their way to explore the sewers. As one does. There are two entrances into the sewers from the Undercity. One to the northeast of our village, the other to the southeast. But the sewers are dangerous, Upworlder. So if you I. dare to travel those dark tunnels, you would be wise to go heavily armed, unless you wish to become a meal for the rock ghouls and the other foul creatures. Okay. Ask your questions, up. Uh... Other? Our village has seen many visitors from the surface recently. Armored troops, swoop gang members, mercenaries, they come to search our sunless world. They're even searching the sewers. So tell me, how does a, a, a escape pod fall from space to the surface of the planet without leaving a hole that would allow you to see up out of it? Like, I mean... As you Maybe wish, it came in sideways. Should you have need of anything Damn. else, come speak to me. 
I represent the entire village and I will do my best to help you however I can. Great, thank you, Dandy Tartofsky. He'll never make it. He's doomed. <sighs> I told him he was a fool to leave the village. He will make it. Run, Hindar, run! Open the gate! Quickly! There isn't much time! I... I can't. The Rakuls are too close. The mutants will kill him if you don't open the gate! And if I open the gate, they'll kill us all! No! You can't do this! This isn't fair! Please yep, that's a rat cool, open folks. the gate. Hindar will die if he doesn't. I can't open the gate. Not while the rat cools are so near. You risk your life, <coughs> stranger. You're brave, Upworlder. I'll open the gate for you, but you gotta be quick. In a few seconds, I must close and lock it again. Yep, that's what they look like. Oh, they're cute! Rat ghouls, by the way, cannot uh, infect you with the rat ghoul disease. Thank you for saving Hendar. You are braver than I am, Worlder. Maybe we outcasts have lived too long in selfish fear. Probably. Perhaps we can learn a lesson from your brave actions. <laughs> but enough of my ramblings. Is there something you need, Upworlder? Nope. Goodbye, Upworld. Yeah, thank you. I was wondering what that crashing sound was. It's just fucking cart. Of course it's cart. Please, you have to help me. Oh my god. Nobody else is gonna help me. Even the Bex won't help me. But I can't just leave him there. He, he's my friend. You'll help me, won't you? Ugh. It's Zalbar. He's in trouble. Big trouble. We have to help him. If we don't, they'll sell him into slavery. Me, me and Zalbar, we were just wandering around here in the Undercity. You know, looking for stuff we could find. Just kind of exploring. We do it all the time. I guess with a Wookiee at your side, you've got to figure you can handle the odd rat ghoul attack. Only this time, they were waiting for us. Gamorian slave hunters. We didn't even have a chance to run. Big Z threw himself at him and then warred for me to run. I, I took <sighs> off. I figured Zalbar would be right behind me. But there were too many of them. He couldn't get away. They're going to sell him to a slaver. I just know it. Okay, do you know where they took him? I don't know for sure, but those Gamorreans like to <coughs> the sewers. The stink reminds them of home, I guess. That's probably where they took Big Z. Okay. Uh... It's a deal. As soon as we get Big Z back, I'll show you a way into that Please don't call him Big Z. Now, that, that, like, throws up some Zaba gross Zap Radigan imagery in that you know where he's being kept. The Gamorreans <laughs> make their camps in the sewers. I bet that's where we'll find Zalbar. Well, like, I already I asked for this card. Secret entrance into the Volker compound. Great. Mission has joined our party. Yeah. Great. Okay. Huh? And she immediately can level up. Because her <coughs> experience gets uh, leveled out to where we are. Um, mission's main thing is dexterity. So we're going to continue to pump dexterity for her. Skills. Stealth. We'll give her security. And demolitions. The rest of that's cross class, so she can't do anything with it. Yeah, you're cute. So it's just warning us that we've got points left that we didn't spend. And let's see what she's equipped with. What can we give her? Uh, the combat suit gives her 20. The heavy suit is 22. Yeah, let's do that. And she's got a vibroblade that is slightly better than normal and is also upgradable. Uh, but we don't want her to use that. We want her to use a gun because she's terrible at melee because of her attributes. And she's hyper-focused, 
in uh, single combat. Uh, let me show you here with her feats. She has dueling, which gives her a bonus if she's got a single one-handed weapon equipped. So she's already kind of committed to doing uh, one weapon focus, which is terrible for her, by the way. Um, she's got the dexterity to handle two weapons, but she doesn't have the feats to handle two weapons. So she's pretty worthless. She also has a sneak attack. Uh, so if the attacker can't respond, or if if uh, the tar target can't respond to the attacker, meaning attacks made from behind, attacks against stunned or immobilized, and attacks made in stealth mode. But attacking from stealth mode cancels stealth mode. Uh, and it only works within 10 meters. And it's not multiplied in a critical hit. Um, folks, this is terrible. Uh, like, it works sort of in the tabletop game. <coughs> but in this game, uh, Unless you're controlling her, she's going to position herself, the, the computer's going to position her, her in front of the opponent and just camp there and not try, not try to move around to the back. So she's almost never going to get sneak attack. You can do stealth to get sneak attack on your first attack, but then you have to be alone in solo mode without the party. Which is pretty much a non-starter for her because she's not that good at combat. Basically, uh, she is completely set up to fail. And let's see here. Oh, we should pay off uh, this guy as well, Largo. Pay off his bounty. I can't remember where he's at. Somewhere in the upper city. Anyway. I'm here. So, mission is going to be pretty much useless. But Forever. We're forced... Yeah, yeah, she's never going to be good. And, uh... As a as a scoundrel character, I I e uh, that takes us to the sewers, by the way. As a scoundrel type character, this is she's pretty much what would happen if you played a scoundrel, and is one of the big reasons why I don't play a scoundrel because they are bad at everything. They're glass cannons without the cannon part. Don't, don't move. I'm, I'm not afraid to use this blaster if I have to. Settle down, kid. We've already lost enough men to those damn rat ghouls. The last thing we need now is more casualties from a needless firefight. Mm. By the looks of you, I'd say you're down here for the same reason we are. To salvage something from those downed Republic space pods. Let me give you some advice. Forget about it. Do yourself a favor and just head back from where you came. Mandalorians don't make threats. We make promises. But I'm just trying to give you a friendly warning. This isn't a good place to stand around chatting. The Undercity is crawling with rat ghouls. I've already lost a half a dozen men to those monsters. Candrus, I heard something. Over there, in the shadows. Sounded like a rat ghoul. No, oh, these things are so goofy. Looks like we've got company. Get those blasters ready, boys. Okay. Uh, you want to actually... I told Davik this salvage mission was a bad idea. His men aren't trained for this kind of thing. I can't babysit them all. Okay, boys. 
We're getting out of here before I lose anyone else. I can't carry all this salvage back by myself. You'd be smart to get out of here as well. Even if you can handle the rat ghouls, I doubt there's anything worth finding anymore. Tava could be down here with this Motley crew to scavenge whatever we could from the Republic escape pods that crashed during the recent battle overhead. But the lower city gangs got here first. Anything worthwhile in those Republic pods is probably in their hands by now. Tava won't like that. What are you, an off-worlder? Everyone knows Tavik. He's a member of the Exchange. You know, the Interstellar Crime Syndicate. Smuggling, gambling, extortion. Tavik controls it all here on Taris. That's why I'm working for him. But lately, the lower city gangs have been giving my boss some trouble. Come on, boys, let's move out. Maybe don't work for a dip. Should we think of that? I, I literally do not think that he ever did. I don't think that uh, the rack ghouls ever actually dropped you. So. Just mapping out a little bit. Land Apprentice Journal. Okay, so that's uh, what's you face. Mines! So, when you spot a mine, uh, if you have the demolition skill, you can either disable it, or if you think you can do it, you can try to recover it. Recovering it is harder, but if you succeed, you get the mine. If you fail, you'll set it off. Let's try to recover it. There we go. Sail fodder for later. Yep. If you're good at recovering mines. Oh, remains. If you're good at recovering mines, uh, it is actually like a really useful way to make money. Let's swing back to the village and uh Talk to Dingus about his uh, dead daughter or whatever. Okay. This this is where he. Oh, okay. That's where he was. It's just the the village looks exactly the same. Greetings once more, Upworlder. Do you bring news of my apprentice? Have you discovered her fate and proved yourself to be a true savior of my people? It is as I feared, then. She joins the list of those who have given their lives in the service of our cause. But though I am saddened by this news, there is yet hope. By finding my apprentice, you have proved yourself worthy, Upworlder. You are to be the beacon on our path to salvation. You will guide us to the promised land. Sure. Uh, you are marked, Upworlder. Even my dim old eyes can see the mantle of destiny that cloaks you. Perhaps old Rukio knows you better than you know yourself. I am old. I have lived a hundred years in the Undercity, cast down into the darkness. 
I know the legends and history of our people, and now you must learn it too. Oh God. The great city of Taris covers the entire surface of this planet. There is no land to grow food. Kelp harvests and the creatures of the sea are our only food source. A century ago, rising levels of toxic pollution poisoned the oceans and famine swept the planet. The rich hoarded food for their own use, and the poor were left to starve and die. From what I've seen of Terrace, it doesn't look like much has changed. Except for the upper city, people here are just as bad off as the poor in your little history. But the poor rose up against this tyranny, and civil war engulfed the planet. Millions died in the fighting, and huge sections of Taurus were destroyed or abandoned. Oh, he just continues on. Crushed like, in the end. like just ignore his heart. The jails could That's not hold them all, though. and just so the practice Karth. of banishing all prisoners to the Undercity was born. Many brave men and women were banished here to the Undercity for their part in the rebellion. People like my father and grandfather were cast down, along with their families. What did you expect? If they could get away with it, the Truisian nobles would stuff their own mothers down here to make more room in the upper city. Now we live a dark existence beneath the streets of Terrace, a life devoid of all hope but one, the Promised Land. And you will be the one to show us the way to get there. I definitely will not. Legends tell of a self-sufficient colony founded just before the famine and lost during the Civil War. A paradise beneath the Undercity where droid servants tend to every need. For many years I searched for the Promised Land, just as my grandfather and father did before me. When I became old and gray, my apprentice continued the search on my behalf. Sounds like a myth to me. Something to give the people here some false hope to cling to so they don't go mad with despair. I have collected Thank you for your input, Karish. The journal of my apprentice provides yet more information. But still, there are too many pieces missing from this puzzle. But I know my father and grandfather each had journals where they recorded their own discoveries. Perhaps... With their journals, I could at last uncover its hidden location. Apparently I have one. Yes, Upworlder. Well done. However, I see that this journal alone does not have enough clues for me to solve this mystery. Too many pieces are still missing. I'm afraid that only with all three journals, <coughs> grandfathers, my fathers, and my apprentices, Will I be able to discover the location of the promise? Wait, did I just tell him that I had his apprentice's journal? I thought I picked up like Perhaps one of the other ones you and just didn't notice. Like I wish you luck, Upworlder, for the sake of the entire village. Like literally. Mm. So the conversation went something like this: We told him that we had his apprentice's journal. He then told us that he needs the apprentice's journal along with the journals of his father and grandfather. Then we reminded him that we still had his apprentice's journal. And he was like, uh, yeah, but shut up. Hey. You can, of course, set mines yourself. And use them for stuff. But, uh... In my experience, they're terrible, so... Please. I, I can feel it inside my skin. Something growing. Like some kind of hideous disease. You have cornflakes disease, obviously. No! No! I can see that! Ah! Sure. What did I say? Let's go! Wet. Wet. 
All right, another level for her. So let's do that, and then we're gonna try to give her treat injury because it's the only thing. And her sneak attack damage goes up. But honestly, it's better for us to just keep going down the uh, dueling feet chain because she's already started on it and she just doesn't get that many feet. What? <coughs> yeah, I know, there's a minor fight. Mine. There's like a million different types of mines and grenades and stuff in this game that are definitely unnecessary. Also, sometimes the uh, auto pathing to find or to get your character to the uh, the explosive you're trying to disarm, like, will have your character just walk right into it instead and set it off, and that's always fun. Not because of anything that you did, but just because the computer decided that's what it wanted to do. So, this is Basila's pod, presumably. There. Sheesh. What am I not doing down here? And just take your time. Security papers. Oh, you're one of those trackers the commander sent down, right? They should have given you an armed escort. It's nasty down here. We've already lost one patrol. We figure the rack ghouls got them. We've had so many encounters with those things, we've actually run out of rack ghoul serum. Plus, we've had several skirmishes with looters from those lower city swoop gangs. I'm telling you, we should just stay in the upper city where we're in control. Oh, is that why you're down here? Search and rescue. I didn't think they'd send anyone. They were in the southern section of the undercity when we lost contact. I would have gone to investigate, but my orders are to search for those crashed escape pods, even if it means leaving another patrol to die. Yeah, sure. The commander won't be too happy if you come back empty-handed, right? Well, the same thing goes for us. Come on, patrol, let's get back to it. The sooner we get this search done, the sooner we can get out of this mutant-infested hole. Move out! Yay. You can pointlessly pick a fight with them, but, you know, it's pointless. Yay, more rack rules. So, rack rules don't really drop loot, uh, which makes it super annoying. And is that okay? That's not an interesting source. There is another entrance to the sewers. <clears throat> well, I was thinking I was using a grenade to just take these guys out, but I guess. Okay, beam splitter, that's nice. Hey, a rack ghoul serum. <laughs> and that right there is the other interesting.
Okay. But I think that the best thing to do for us right now is to return to the hideout. This allows us to warp immediately back here. And uh, I should uh, equip missions vibrably because it's more better. And let's see. I don't have anything more for that. But I do have a vibration cell for missions. So that's cool. Karth's Blaster. Got a beam splitter that gives him one point of energy damage. Okay. Since nobody is wearing this, we might as well take that off of it. Yeah, thanks. That was very flashy. And just this is the party configuration I want. And we're gonna head out. Wait, was this was this the guy that I? No, he had a name. <coughs> Remembering that I need to go to the cantina. I don't remember why, but oh, yes, now I do. This idiot. Leave me alone. I'm not giving out any auto print to my fans today. So you're the one doing Zax's dirty work. So, remember that this is this is a legal bounty placed on his head by the Republic, not by like some crime syndicate, because that guy is a murderer. And I just want to point that out. Uh, we're gonna do some of the dueling quests. Sure. Fibro blades and blasters, and nobody ever dies. How come I get the feeling you're trying to take us for a ride? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm not 
It's terrible. This is for the best. We could use those credits from these duels, but using your real name is too risky. The Sith might have come across a clue manifest back in the Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, draw your eyes to the center ring. We have a very special presentation in store for you. You've seen him lose night after night after <coughs> night, but this time he's had What? It crashed. It literally just it, it didn't even crash. It just minimized. I don't know what that was about. Okay. So, Duncan is pretty ridiculous in this one. Like, we could have beaten him when we first came in here. It's over! The fight is over! The mysterious stranger has won! The three! Are any of us surprised? Did I losing? Is it you? You have to do better than that to impress us, stranger! Okay. What do you want? All of the guests. You beat me in the doling ring, and now you're gonna rub it in my face. Yeah, well, I'm used to it. So pardon me if I ignore your floating. No, oh, well, okay. Bye then. What a dick. This guy will actually talk to your feet wet in the dual ring. Not bad. You've got real talent, kid. Stick with it and don't go places. My area of expertise is pretty much limited to the dueling ring and the other combatants here at the cantina. But I'll try to answer any questions you might have. Why are you such right a stupid talk? I've been dueling here for nearly 20 years, and I remember every duelist who's been through this cantina. Of course, I remember the first time we walked into Shawshank. Ice, Twitch, and me. Vendak's Star Killer comes in once in a while. He's retired now. Is it? Thank you. Is somebody doing his voice right? It's, yeah, it's not actually like Morgan Freeman. Duncan, worst duelist ever. His nickname is Dead Eye because he fights like he's blind. I wouldn't worry about him. <laughs> Gerlong used to be pretty good before the accident. His blaster overheated during a match and exploded. One in a million occurrence. Paralyzed three fingers on his right hand. They call him Gerlong Two Fingers now. He hasn't been the same since the accident. But he's still out here <coughs> very high living. That's why I never fight with blasters. Okay. Nice? Well, she's not much for personality, but she's a hell of a fighter. Confident and steady. Popular with the crowd, too. If you rub against her, you know you're in for a tough match. Uh, tell me about Twitch. Twitch? I think that Rodian is completely crazy, but he's very, very good despite his insanity. Or maybe because of it. Even I can't beat him. Me? Well, I've seen my share of battles. My best years are gone. But I can still hold my own against anyone in here. Except maybe Twitch. And Vendak? What can I say? Vendak was a legend. Never lost a match his entire career. But he was bloodthirsty as an Iridorian battle rager. Never liked having to face the same opponent twice. Got so he wouldn't battle anyone unless it was a death match. When they made death matches illegal, he went into retirement. He still hangs around here sometimes. Ben Dax, the best there ever was. Bang and simple. Even now, I bet that anyone who steps into the ring with him wouldn't make it out alive. Okay. Goodbye, stranger. Maybe we'll talk again later. So, that's who we're up against. He's nice. Yeah. 
Hey, I it's over! The fight is over! The mysterious stranger has won! Gerlon losing to a rookie! Is this a sign that his injuries have finally caught up with him? Or is the mysterious stranger for real? Only time will tell! Yay! You beat me fair and square, stranger. But if I still had the use of my fingers, you wouldn't have won. Back before my injury, I would have mopped the ring up with you. Sure. Yeah. So now we get 200. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, draw your eyes to the center ring. We have a very special presentation in store for you. Over in this corner, a woman would steal on her bones and ice water in her veins. She is cold and quick as death itself. You know her. You love her. Ice. And in the other corner, a rising star taking the first step into the big leagues. I give you the mysterious stranger. Okay. Hooray! It's over! The fight is over! The mysterious stranger has won! Ice is knocked out cold! Looks like we have a rising star in the mysterious stranger hooks! But how high can this star soar? You'll just have to watch and see! We'll just have to watch and see! Okay. And now I know you won't shy away from the cold, hard truth. So I'll just come right out and say it. I can't compete with the likes of you, stranger. I know when I'm overmatched. You're good. Very good. But you're wrong if you think that means I'm suddenly going to warm up to you. Truth is, I really don't have anything more to say. So you might as well move on. She's like a low rent Mr. Freeze. Everything she says has to be an ice pun. Yeah. 300 credits. It's interesting how the, everyone always bets in nice, even increments. Yeah. 
Yes, let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, draw your eyes to the center ring. We have a very special presentation in store for you. He uses one of these goofy ass double bladed swords. <coughs> Which I guess sort of makes sense because episode one had come out and you know Darth Maul had that double bladed lightsaber, but it's still stupid. I mean, let me qualify that. Like, uh it's stupid to have a double bladed sword. A double bladed lightsaber is awesome. Hey, what are you It's over! The fight is over! The mysterious stranger has won! Foul is down! And questions abound! Is this the end for the long time pet? Is it time for Maul to hang up his clothes? And for the mysterious stranger? Which is waiting in the wings? Yeah, the. Uh Carl, there's actually a quarter staff in this game that you can buy as a weapon. It sucks, but like you can get one if you wanted one for some reason. There, there's basically no advantage to using that or versus using. You're good, stranger. Maybe even as good as Ben back in his prime. Double chains. But when you beat me, you make me realize something. First, it was just Twitch I couldn't handle. Now it's you and Twitch. Pretty soon there'll be another young hotshot crawling past me in the rankings. This game has been good to me, but my time is done. I need to get away from the duel rings for a while. Hang things over. Goodbye, stranger. I wish you all the best. Bye, Marl. He sounds really cool. He's <laughs> a very chill dude. Yeah. 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 Well, 400. Let's do Twitch. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, draw your eyes to the center ring. We have a very special presentation in store for you. Hold on to your seats and stay back from the edges of the ring. He's wild, he's unpredictable, he's borderline psychotic. And he's the best damn Jewish in the game today. Give it up for Twitch! But Twitch's opponent plans to take the champion down. Night after night, battle after battle. Night after night, it hasn't even been an hour. In this corner, the challenger for the title of Taris Dueling Champion, the Mysterious Stranger. Okay. Now, I'm being very lazy. I'm not using any of my skills or anything like that. <coughs> Let's see. Yeah. It's over! The fight is over! The mysterious stranger has won! Twitch is meant to be a very high level. The reign of terror is over, ladies and gentlemen! We have a new champion! The mysterious stranger! Yay! Okay. Give me my money. Yeah. 
Yeah, great. Okay. Okay. Guy is cocky, ain't he? Yes. He's also like really hard. Like he's tougher than Twitch. And I kinda struggle with Twitch a little bit. We well, also didn't use any skills. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. I thought he I thought he said to talk to that guy to set it up, but like whatever. Um we're not gonna do the death match anytime soon anyway. <coughs> Other things to do. Other things to do and also <coughs> As I said, um he is uh pretty uh pretty tough. Um, I had not heard that they were remaking KOTOR, uh, Carl, but, uh, that makes a lot of sense that they would. This is one of the games that Bioware is really proud of. Hey, Carl. You're a pilot for the Republic, right? You've been all over the galaxy, I bet, right? So tell me, how would you rate Taurus compared to other worlds you've seen? To be honest, Mission, Taurus would rate pretty low. Prejudice, rich, spoiling themselves by the poor are crushed beneath them. It's not a really pretty picture. Yeah, but that's only since the Sith occupation. Before that, well, I guess it wasn't all that different, really. Hmm. Maybe Taurus ain't as great as I thought, you know? Trust me, Mission, there are a lot of worlds better than Terrace. There, there are worse, too, but Terrace is no place for a kid to live on her own. Even a kid who's got a Wookiee to look out for. Hey, I ain't no kid. I look out for Zolvar as much as he looks out for me. Pixie's my friend, not my babysitter. Jeez, I come ask you a question, you give me a lecture. Don't you snap at me, Missy. You want a lecture? How's this? Only bratty little children fly oh, off the handle because of a simple earth. I like how you can egg them on. I don't have to listen to you, Car. You ain't my father, though you're sure old enough to be. So keep your lectures inside your withered old head, because I don't need them. I sure as hell don't need this. Let's just drop it and get back to what we were doing. Uh, that was productive. Thank you, guys. I'm so glad to have you guys hanging around. Let's go give this guy his magic food ass. Welcome stuff. back. Are you in need of healing or medical supplies? Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. You have the serum? Impossible. How did you get this? No, wait. I don't really want to know. Can... Can I see it? The serum, I mean? I need to see if there's enough for me to analyze it so I can start producing it in mass quantities. Hmm, let me see. Yes, this is it. A cure for the Rakul disease. With this sample, I can make enough serum for everyone. The people of Terrace owe you a debt they can never repay. Please, take this small reward. It isn't much, but it's all I can afford. A few credits and two spare med packs. Ah, <clears throat> uh, let's see. You truly have a noble and generous spirit. If you deserve something for your effort, I'll tell you what. I'll give you a discount whenever you shop at my store. It's the least I can do. Now, is there anything else I can do for you? Um, yeah, let me see what you got for sale now that I got a discount. Just step over here and I'll show you what I have in stock. My prices are very reasonable. Just what I need to keep this facility operating. Okay, so... Bio Antidote Package is nice, but it requires implant level three. Nerve enhancement package is nice, but not one that I'm gonna want anytime soon. And uh, the Rec Ghoul Serum. I'm gonna buy one of these. Well, he only has one. So. 
Yay, we gained light side points. Blow it! <clears throat> you brought that rat gold serum to Zax, you would have made it worth your while. No, you had to go and do the honorable thing. Yep. Okay. I would really like to see uh, KOTOR 2 get remade, because I really liked KOTOR 2 after they fixed it. Oh my god, mission! Are you ready to have a civil chat? Or is this going to be another childish tantrum? Tantrum? I'm trying to apologize, you nerf herder. I mean, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get mad at you. It's just that I'm sick of everyone treating me like I'm a helpless kid. Yeah, I know. And I'm, I'm sorry about what I said, too. I'm just a little on edge lately. Not surprising, considering all we've been through. But I shouldn't take it out on you. Yeah, no, you shouldn't, you dick. Vision, we have to know that we don't think you're helpless. We look what I do. Doing. Look at what we're doing. You're not just along for the ride. We need you. We do not need her. Nobody's ever said anything like that to me before. Not even Big Z. He might think it, but he's not really one for words, you know. Thanks, Carl. Well, that's not good. But I know it is. Sometimes you just need to hear a few words of encouragement. Kids are Kids are like that. Oh Listen, my god, cards! Oh, I get it. Okay, you got me. You're pretty funny, Card. No, he's guy. not. Come on, geezer. He's an insufferable douche nozzle. We all know it. Yes, he very much is. And I am not convinced that that was intended as... It's backhanded, and we all know it. Yeah. Alright, that one guy in here... I will definitely be doing KOTOR 2 after this. I've never actually beaten KOTOR 2, but I've gotten pretty far into it. Uh, you definitely need the uh, mods that restore all the cut quests and stuff. Um, Obsidian made uh, KOTOR 2... Uh, oh my god, Mission. <sighs> Speak to Mission. You want to know about me? I really Nobody's do not. Nobody's ever really been interested in me before. What do you want to know? How did you and Zalabar hook up? Uh, game? Hook up means something very different than well, what you're thinking. I guess they're dead. It was just me on my own until the day I saw Zalabar in the lower city. I could tell right away he was in trouble. This was before the gang wars were out of hand. But even then, the Volkers were scum. A few of them were hassling Big Z, trying to pick a fight. But he wasn't looking for trouble. Hey, nobody said the Bulgars were smart, but there were three of them, so maybe they figured they could handle him. I don't know. Anyway, I don't like the Bulgars at the best of times. And when I saw them picking on this poor Wookiee, all alone on a strange planet, overwhelmed by the big city, I just lost it. I screamed out, leave him alone, you core slimes, and charged right at them. Well, one of them saw me coming and slapped me so hard he just about knocked me cold. And you deserve it. Uh, okay. Hey, don't treat me like I'm a little girl. I ain't no kid. I'm 14 years old. Ugh, That's all gross. They scare me. They're nothing but cowards. I knew how to deal with them. Of course, I never got the chance. I guess Zalbar didn't like seeing me get smacked around. He let out this howl and yanked that Volker a meter up off the ground and held him there by his throat. The other two screamed and ran off. Can't say I blame them. The first time you see an angry Wookiee up close, it isn't a pretty sight. I thought Zalbar was going to rip that punk's arms off and beat him to death with his own fists. The poker was so scared, he fainted. Or maybe it was Big Z's breath just knocked him out. I keep telling Zalbar to brush those choppers of his, but he never listens. Just stay upwind when he's speaking and you'll be fine. Anyway, I knew those Wookiees would be back with friends, yeah, so shut I up, grabbed kid. Zalbar and we took off. Ever since then, we've been a team. We look out for each other, you know? Okay, how did Zalbar... He was some kind of trouble back on Kashyyyk. That's all I know, really. Big Z doesn't like to talk about it. In case you didn't notice, he's the strong, silent type. Doesn't much matter to me, though. I accept him for what he is, not what he was. He and Zalbar like to live in the present. Okay. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? You think I can't take care of myself? 
I got street smarts. I know how to get by on my own. In fact, I look out for Salva more than he looks out for me, you know? Because he's a little bit too gullible to make it alone on the mean streets of the lower city. Okay. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Like I used to tell my brother, bad talk and slick words don't get the job done. My brother's a touchy subject, you know? It just so happens, I don't really feel like talking about him right now. Nothing personal. Let's just get back to the business plan, okay? Ugh, I hate her brother, by the way. He's a terrible character. Well, she's a terrible character. That's so fair. Worry. I don't I'm just looking for that one guy that wanted like a bunch of credits to not die. This guy. Lark. What? What do you want now? You're not going to tell Davix Bounty Hunters where I'm hiding, are you? I don't think anyone can help me. I owe Davix. I've been hiding here ever since. Yeah. You'd give 200 credits to a stranger just to help them out? I don't believe it. Well, uh, thank you. Wow, that sure was generous of you. I just hope they don't end up beating those credits later on. Now I can pay for Davik. Oh, thank you. You saved my life. Oh, I better go give this to Davik right away. Uh -huh. And he got a level up. I'm so disgusted with you, Garth. All right. What else do you have that's worth taking? Um, rapid shot might not be bad. Toughness is probably not bad for me either, but, um... We'll take Rapid Shot just so that he can start down that feet tree. Feet trees are terrible, and I hate them, and I am glad that we moved past that. 5th edition D&D does not have feet trees. Of course, 5th edition D&D barely has feats. It's not necessarily like that. Yeah, but it likes another quality, like second win. Oh my god, mission. Hey there, what can I do for you? I was a little snappish when you last talked. What, Sorry yeah, like two that. seconds ago? I get a little touchy when it comes to Chris. It's kind of embarrassing telling people Embarrassing? Why? It's complicated. Griff wasn't the most popular guy. He had his faults. But I still loved him, you know? Sometimes people don't understand. He never knew my parents. My brother always looked out for me. He's the one who brought me the guitars. I was just a kid, only five. But I remember the trip, if you could call it that. We were stuffed inside a packing crate in the Star Freighter's cargo hold with just enough food and water to make the trip. Not exactly first class, you know? I don't know the whole story. I was pretty young, but my brother owed a lot of money. Might even have been a few arrest warrants out for him, I don't know. The only way to get off the planet was to smuggle ourselves in. I mean, I don't want to make it sound like we were criminals. Well, maybe my brother was. See, this is why I don't like to talk about it. It makes Griff sound worse than he really was. My brother had his problems, but he always looked out for me. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Without my brother, I don't know where I'd be. He gambled and drank, and he was always borrowing money for his latest get-rich-quick scheme. But he had a good heart, you know? He taught me how to survive. He showed me how to slice into a computer security system, how to get inside a locked building without the entrance codes, and how to spot a wealthy mark for a quick shell game. Uh, yeah, he was a... Hey, you don't know what it's like. They need those skills here in the lower city. Griff did right by me. I really miss him when he left. I keep hoping he'll come back someday. I promise me he'll be good. 
He fell into a bad crowd. It's all Lena's fault. She's the one who took him from me. Just batted those long lashes at him and off he went. I don't want to talk about Griff and Lena. Just the thought of that space tramp makes my blood boil. The subject's closed as far as I'm concerned. If I'm going to be any help to you, I can't be worrying about my brother running off with some intergalactic skank. So is there something else you need? No. Okay, have it your way. All right. Now, stop interrupting me with whatever stupid bullshit you got. Thank you, interruptus jumps. This should be nope. That's to do with apartments. <coughs> so I got completely turned around by that cutscene. I swear to God, if you interrupt me again by feeling pouty, I will punch you. Just punch her anyway. Mission is probably the single least useful character in the game. Her damage output is. Despite her sneak attack thing, her damage output is honestly the lowest out of any character. And there's no real easy way to fix that. Karth? Yes, what's on your mind? I thought I said I don't want to talk about it. Listen, sister, just because we're working together doesn't mean you get to go badger me with constant questions. Blast it, if you want the most frustrating woman to talk to, isn't there someone else you can harass for a little while? What, me? What did I do? What did I do? Oh. Okay, I give up. You win. Look, I suppose I could use someone to talk to. I'm just not used to it. I don't know why you're so interested, but here it goes. One of all the men of Atreus, the one that stands out above all of them, is the one that I respect the most. Saul. Uh, okay. With good reason. Admiral Saul Carath is the commander of the entire Sith fleet. He's half the reason Malak has done so well in the war. So is my I like that, uh, like, and, and by like, I mean, I don't like that, uh, several of these choices, you have a couple of different ways to respond, uh, I know now that he was trying to recruit me but the Sith, it doesn't actually matter because they'll just. Continue. I argued with him and he got angry and he left. I never saw him again. Saul was my mentor. I apologize for speaking over him, but you guys can see the cut. There it goes. Even when things looked to be at their worst, I just I couldn't conceive of it. He, he couldn't be serious. I was wrong, of course. He only left us for the Sith. He, he gave them the codes to bypass our scanners. I remember waking up as the first of the Sith bombers snuck past our defenses and began destroying half of our dock ships. I knew right away what would happen. I'm not going to stop him. I could have stopped it all. I blame Saul, not myself. I was, I was stupid and I ignored the danger. He nearly destroyed us all. But I fought Saul for years now, and if I ever catch up to him, he will regret what he's done. He will regret it. Okay. No, no, it's not. But I don't want to talk about it right now. Let's go. Great. So there's more to that story. Am 
most of your companions have a companion quest line, uh, and a large part of it consists of. I saw you talking with Rukul. He told you his legends about the promised man, didn't he? He told you all about his missing apprentice and the other lost explorers, right? You know, most people don't believe his stories. They figure he's nothing but an old crook. But I think there might be some truth in what he's saying. That's why I want to stop him. Okay. For an outcast, everything's pretty good. The village lies and need to bring in food and supplies. I'm an important man. If it wasn't for Gendar, I'd be running this place. I get the feeling if it wasn't for Gendar, this place would be a lot worse off than it is. But if Rukul ever finds his promised land, I'm sunk. People won't need to rely on me anymore. I'll just be another nobody like all the rest of the villagers. I won't let that happen. Oh, okay. Don't judge me. I learned a long time ago that if I want to survive down here, I've got to look out for number one. The two explorers who went searching for the promised land might have found something. They might have found clues or evidence, just like Rugal's apprentice. They would have recorded that information in their journals. I'll pay you if you bring all three journals to me. The two from the explorers and the one from Rugal's apprentice in. I can destroy the evidence and make sure nobody ever finds the promised land. I've saved up enough credits for my business here to make it worth your while if you help me. Don't be a fool! I'm the only one here who can pay you for those journals. Rukil has nothing. He won't be able to come up with any kind of reward. Once you have all three journals, just bring them to me and I'll give you a decent reward. Now. Was there something else you needed? I don't like this person. Yeah, okay. You'll come back and see me if you want a deal. Yeah. This is pretty cool, except for the part where he's a complete scumbag. <clears throat> okay, that's the main gate. Where are those stupid... plague-ridden idiots? Who's doing here? Back again. Is there something else you need? Your offer is generous, Upworlder, but the serum is useless to us now. The villagers infected with the rat ghoul disease have been quarantined beyond this gate. At any moment, they could be transformed into terrible monsters. Nobody would be foolish enough to risk going into the pens to give them the cure. The infected ones could transform into rat ghouls and attack them at any moment. Oh, okay. I can't stop you from going through the gates, Upworlder, but if the infected ones have already transformed into rock ghouls, you'll be walking into your grave. Noted. Please, help us! We're infected with the rat ghoul disease! At any moment we could... Uh, no! Those kill me! No! What time? Not to surprise the hire you, but like, this is scripted and all that's happened. We've been poisoned by them. We'll just uh, let that poison take its course. Please, you have to help us. We beg you. We don't want to end up like the others. Please help us. We can't end up like them. Okay. You... you have a cure? Please give it to me, please, quickly, before it's too late. Quickly, I must inject it before it is too late. Yes. I feel it working. I feel the disease burning away. It... it's like a miracle. I am cured. Thank you, Upworlder. You have saved us from a fate worse than death. I only wish I had some reward to give you. Maybe you can find something worthwhile in the wreckage of that Republic escape pod. 
Not long ago, an escape pod crashed in the Undercity, far to the northeast of the village. We were going to try and salvage equipment from it, but we were attacked by the rat ghouls and infected. I'd tell you more if I could, but our salvage team never reached the pod. It's probably still there, unless some of the other Upworlders already found it and picked it clean. We should go now, Upworlder. We're anxious to return to the village and see our families again. Thank you once again for everything you've done. Yay. And so, once again, we're here. <coughs> All right. So I think this is the closer of the two sewer entrances. Promised Land Journal. Look at how young this character model is. Like it was either his, he was either the father or grandfather of Rukil, who is way way older than anyone else. Oh, I don't get any, any experience for just turning it back on. Oh, whatever. What's up? <coughs> and so, once again... There... Check out. Yeah, that's actually good for her. I'm not giving her the stealth belt because I'm not going to use her for stealth. Ooh, look at this. This is one of those old style manual locks. No computer codes or nothing. The sewers is the only place you can see one of these on terrace. You can't use conventional security spikes on these old locks. But don't worry, I've come across them before. I've rigged up a little device that should do the trick. Yay. 
Side, busty and soggy good. <laughs> finally at a point where we have more party members than we have available party slots. I'm going to go with Zalar. So, Zalbar is co is set up as a scout. Um, which I'm going to give him treat injury because that's what I'm going to be using him for is just healing himself. Um, Zalbar is focused in melee. And uh, it's actually not a bad idea for Zalbar to take dueling just because you won't have enough good like melee weapons for a while. But you could do two weapon fighting. You definitely want him uh, a melee specialist, uh, rather than try to do, like, a, uh, uh, a, oh, uh, something else. You want him to do, a, to be a melee specialist rather than trying to make him do ranged, uh, because his stats really, uh, well, I'll show you. Um, I'm going to take dueling for the defensive bonus, because uh, Zalbar has some issues. So, his strength and constitution are 20, and his dexterity is only a 13. So, stat-wise, he's way better at melee than at... Uh, he's way better at melee than at range. Notice that he can't wear any armor. You can give him a one-handed weapon, or or you can uh, you can give him a melee weapon or a ranged weapon. Um, and I think the cardio package, yeah, that's that's not going to do anything for him because his 
the way <coughs> excuse me oh god i know i sound like i'm dying i'm i'm not i assure you um the uh way that stat bonuses work in dnd is uh oh and, and by dnd i mean all all games that are based on dnd including the uh d20 star wars game that this game is based on um is uh your attribute bonus goes up by one point for every even number beyond 10. So, like, going from 20, which is a plus 5, to 21 is not going to give him a bigger bonus. But if he goes up to 22, it will. But we don't have any way to get him up to 22. So, he won't. This is his little cell. Thank you. Now, unfortunately, you are forced to keep Zalbar with you, or, or to keep uh, Mission with you. There's Zalbar's bowcaster. Now you would think that since it's got his name on it, Zalbar's bowcaster would be a great weapon for him. It does one to ten damage. It's a blaster rifle with a plus one to hit. The vibroblade, which he's equipped with, does one to ten damage. But the vibroblade runs off of his strength, which is a plus five. And the bowcaster runs off of his dexterity, which is a plus one. So he's going to do much more damage with that vibroblade, even though he has a completely unique bowcaster. Now, you might be thinking, well, we could just give the bowcaster to a different character. You could, but nobody in this game is particularly well suited to using rifles. Uh, with one exception, uh, but I don't want to spoil things. Um, almost every character is either going to be using pistols or swords. I have already mentioned that Candrus uses heavy weapons and is specialized and focused in that. Um, there is like one character that uses rifles. And, uh, they're basically the only use case for Zelvar's bowcaster. Which isn't even that great as, like, you know, a rifle in general. It's just not completely terrible. On it. Done. Hey. How come they don't trigger me? How come they didn't trigger the mine? Because they cheat. Probably they do. Um, you may notice that I waited for a second there. Um, so when you're in combat... Wait, did I get... Okay, I must have passed. When you're in combat... Uh, the game makes you roll behind the scenes for every skill that you attempt. Uh, but when you're out of combat, it allows you to do a thing that they call take 20, which basically means uh, they just assume that you're going to keep trying this until you get it. So they just assume that you're eventually going to roll a 20. So, if you're out of combat, and it takes a minute after combat's done to transition to that post-combat state, um, if you're out of combat, then uh, you automatically get your best roll. And 
when you're attempting to uh, disarm a mine, and the mine will explode if you fail your check, well, obviously, you don't want to fail that check. So I waited until she, she straightened up and was standing still, like, in her neutral pose, like that. Before I did it. back to where we were. Now, I'm going to go back there, don't, don't worry, but I'm just uh, kind of cruising around here. Did I already eat the skeletal corpse? <coughs> I must have. This is the force field that Mission was talking about. character is a little fucking kid. <coughs> and we'll make her the most sexualized alien species in the Star Wars universe. these computer spikes and I hardly ever use my computer hacking skills, which honestly I, I probably should have gone more into repair than computer hacking. If we take this ladder, we will end up being ambushed by a bunch of wreckers. So that was cool. But remember the Sith Soldier Corps, that's where uh, we got the serum, so... So that was that. Now we've got all of the journals we need for the promise land. Uh, I'm playing a light side character, so I'm going to trade them for hopes and dreams. But uh, like honestly, it's the objectively better choice, knowing what I do uh, about the the way the game is going to progress, is the money. Yes, 
more med packs. I will hoard them and never use them ever again. Somewhat good use of uh, hey. the skeletal corpse. Eh? All right. So that ladder doesn't go anywhere, <coughs> and you can't take it. <coughs> uh. I apologize for all the hacking. You sound like you're done. I, I do sound like I'm dying, but I assure you, I am not dying. I'm actually getting better. He is getting better, slowly. Okay. So here... Huh? Mission... You won't be able to get that computer to lower the energy fields unless you know the proper code. Lucky for you... I've got them. I picked them off the pocket of Black Volker, who had a little too much to drink in the cantina one night. Here, let me get that energy field down for you. Oh, would you? Would you do the one thing that you're meant to do for me? One thing that you're actually mm -hmm. okay at. Like, the on literally the only reason you are here? How come the Rack Rules are attacking us and not the Gamorians? I wish they were just like much closer to Okay. I, I really wish you could tilt the camera up or down to actually like look at some of these maps from different angles. Interesting. Well, I really should start wrapping up. But I do want to uh, get through as much of the sewer section as I can. <sighs> no way you could avoid that. Especially with your ranged weapon mission. I gotta look into AI scripts for this game. You might be a way to change her tactics.
Hey, Big Z, we gotta do something about your breath. I didn't want to say anything, but it's bad. Worse than usual, which is hard to believe. In fact, now that I think about it, your breath has been pretty rancid ever since we rescued you from those Gamorian slavers. What'd they feed you, buddy? Oh, Salvar, that's terrible. I know how grouchy you get if you don't get your eight square meals a day. I'm amazed you didn't pass out from hunger. Jesus. Ew. No wonder your breath is so bad, Big Z. Gamorians smell like bantha poodoo. We'll have to pick you up a toothbrush to clean that stench out of your choppers. Okay, relax. No toothbrush. Sheesh. Just try and eat something else to cover up that smell, okay? Stay away from anything that's smart enough to lock you in a cage this time. You two are priceless. By which I mean I would give you away at no cost. Okay. So, this is the Rancor layer. Of course there's a Rancor involved, because this game cannot possibly come up with a different large monstrous creature in the Star Wars universe. I mean, like, heaven forbid you do something original and unique. No, it's gotta be a Rancor, because that appeared in the movie. Uh, even though it's you know, an infinite universe with billions of planets and all that stuff. I'm, I'm going to say the game. <clears throat> After we, uh, quote-unquote, deal with the uh, Rancor, uh, we will be able to assault the Hidden Back Bay, or the, um, not the Hidden Back, the Volker Base, and uh, we'll be able to kill a lot of them, and it, it'll be fun. And eventually we'll be able to do, uh, the, um, uh, Swoop Racing, uh, which is not a terrible minigame, it's just kind of boring, um, but, uh, that's all for another time. So, thank you guys for watching, uh, tomorrow night's Monday, so we'll be back to doing Nick's Picks, uh, more, uh, Big Sky Troop. So, until then, guys... Later.